I think we want to uh, get started. We'll just start uh, by saying uh, welcome. Uh, my name is John Tebow uh, with Mayor Nicholson's office. I'm here uh, joined by John Fon also with uh, Mayor Nicholson's office. Mayor Nicholson was hoping to be here. Um, the impending birth of his child prevented him from doing so, but he wanted to send his warmest uh, wishes and, and definitely extend his thanks. Um, this has been a um, you know, multi-season and multi-month process. We appreciate all the feedback that we've received so far. It's definitely put us on a good path to make the investments that are gonna drive Lynn forward uh, in an equitable and inclusive way um, and make the most of these ARPA dollars. So I'm gonna turn it over to our consultants with CSS and then we'll get the uh, PowerPoint underway. Hi, thank you for having us today. My name is Nicole Figueredo. I am um, with Capital Strategic Solutions and joining me this evening is Jennifer Thompson. And we have been in and around your community, I think since, when did we start this process? Almost like a year ago, about feels like. Feels like I've, I've kind of just moved into Lynn. Um, and I've missed you. I haven't been here in a, in a few months. Um, so we're happy to get this underway and happy to talk about phase two. So in, during the immediate investment for ARPA, the city addressed a lot of critical needs when they first received this funding. And they included 13.5 in municipal owned and public buildings for the HVAC system upgrades to combat the pandemic. 500 COVID anti-aging kits were purchased. Sorry, 500,000. $3 million was provided to the Economic Development Group for small um, business grants as well as for nonprofits. $800,000 was invested in citywide translation services. And we have those translation services here tonight for whoever needs them. So in phase one, the city wanted a the city wanted a very robust community outreach program. I know that I've walked the city, I've talked to people, um, people were sick of seeing me after a while, so I had to disappear for a minute and then pop back in. But it was very community driven and we were listening to everything that you said. So what, what we found in phase one and what the city elected to do with the ARPA first round of funding was to invest 18.2 million in renovating and updating existing park spaces, 54, excuse me, 5.4 in infrastructure. That includes your roads, your water, those types of systems to help your community provide clean water to your streets and passable roadways. I know that you know a lot of the roads are kind of a little bumpy here, um, as with most communities around Massachusetts. 4.9 million was dedicated to low income housing improvements and senior housing rehabilitation. Three point, excuse me, three million was invested to early childhood education. 1.5 million was committed to public safety. 1.5 million was committed to upgrades to public buildings in the city, in, as well as branding a brand new city website that will be underway, I believe, shortly. $263,000 was committed to public health initiatives. $160,000 was invested in economic development projects. $110,000 was devoted to nonprofits. And $20,000 was dedicated to workforce development strategic planning. Now tonight we're here to talk about the phase two investment for ARPA projects. And I'm gonna pass it back over to John. Thank you very much. Uh, as we uh, look towards the, the city goals for distributing uh, the ARPA funds, uh, we wanted this to be community driven and we we in the mayor's office really worked in partnership Hello, with the, please. excuse me? We, we really worked in partnership with the, uh, the council. We really worked in partnership with the council, such as uh, Councilor Allen Sugg, a ward three councilors here with us tonight. Uh, and 
Councillor at Large Brian Field, who was the Council Liaison for ARPA. Uh, we wanted to ensure an equitable process, that's why we ran a very deep uh, survey process to get the priorities from the community. We went into uh, different communities with the intention to ensure that. Uh, administrative oversight, again, that was working with the Council to ensure that uh, there was oversight in the process and that uh, there was proper review and discussion about these proposals. Um, and we really wanted to uh, focus the impact on, on uh, people in Lynn, the organizations and communities that, that serve the city and, uh, as we look towards this recovery, this just transition period, uh, trying to come back from COVID-19. Uh, and lastly, we really wanted to maximize and, and leverage the funding, so that was being really strategic about uh, which projects we were funding and how they were being funded. The next slide. Pass it over to Tiva. Right, so with this slide, I think we're talking about with, for phase two, um, where we sought to put uh, the funding. What we heard about in the community meetings um, was there were a number of emerging uh, trends and buckets, and this is a breakdown of where the second round of nearly 22 million is being funded. Um, we gathered that from you know ex explicit community feedback, um, through the survey process uh, from round one. Um, we, in the community meetings that we had, in each ward, with uh, every ward councilor sponsored a meeting, we did a meeting here at City Hall, and we had continue, we tried to do as much continuous outreach um, and uh, trying to educate ourselves as much as where, where we wanted to see these funds being spent. So I think one of the things that we're really proud of and excited about is that we're putting almost 49% of the second round of funding toward housing, which is something that we heard about as a need in the community. We knew that it was a need going in, um, and so we're excited uh, to be putting that much. If we could have gotten that 50%, we were really trying, but um, at the end of the day, it was just a 49%. So we want to make sure that you know that the feedback that we got, the feedback that we collected, all the surveys that you filled out were not in vain, that we, that we heard you loud and clear. Um, about 18% went to infrastructure, water, and roads, um, which are going to be pivotal in making sure that we have the infrastructure necessary for people day in and day out. 14% um, of this funding went toward um, public health. 6% went towards food security, which was another of the, um, I think, primary, um, one of the primary um, points that we heard from people that it, the, you know, we saw that the need for food security. We had a number of proposals, um, which you'll hear a little bit about a little bit later. Um, but but that was a point that we thought was important to invest in as well. Uh, Six percent went towards uh, nonprofit support, uh, and three percent went toward uh, workforce development, with four percent uh, going toward the city, so that we could again invest in the programs that uh, that are uh, required by our residents. So we want to take a, a deeper look into that. Uh, uh, we want to take a, a deeper look into that 49% uh, going into the housing. So here you can see uh, almost a, a quarter million going to the Lynn Shelter Association. They communicated to us a need for emergency shelter for uh, adult homelessness uh, in the area. We all know that that's a problem here and we saw this opportunity to, to invest in that capacity. Uh, 400000 is going to uh, Northeast Legal Aid for an eviction prevention project. This is a project to provide legal assistance to people in that most critical moment when they're in danger of losing their housing. Uh, that is a very underserved moment uh, of, you know, to, for, to, to get legal aid in that time usually requires uh, money that people don't have if they're, you know, in these types of situations and, and putting this funding towards that is really critical. Uh, a half a million um, uh, towards uh, Lynn Housing Authority. And there's, there's uh, the next three are similar. Uh, these are different uh, projects. There's um, Wa Plaza and State Housing. These are two affordable housing developments uh, uh, that, that are using this funding directly. And then the RAF supplemental funding, that's rental assistance to help people make ends meet. Uh, as we all know, uh, the, the, the economic situation has been tough for families in Lynn, and we wanted to 
to put more into that program to ensure we can keep trying to get people over the line as we, as we get through these times. Um, a million to Neighborhood Development Associates. This is for the Lynn Armory Apartments. You, we're all very familiar with the Armory, an iconic building there on the Commons, um, historic building. We really, as a city, have been ready to turn that into uh, housing for veterans. Uh, and there's been, uh, again, with the recent economic uh, uh, turns, it's been difficult to make that project work. And this money's gonna make that project work and we can get veterans that, that housing that they deserve. Uh, another million to two life communities. This is a uh, 500 Linfield Street. This is the old Union Hospital site. This is affordable housing for, for seniors, and again, a similar situation where this is funding to, to make that project possible under you know the, uh, today's conditions. Um, and then again to the Hennessy House, a million uh, for, for upgrades. Uh, again, uh, this is converting units uh, and, and providing uh, a new uh, upgrade to that, to that housing. We get to the next slide. And lastly, um, this is where you can see the majority of the funding has, has gone. Uh, $5.5 million into the Essex County Community Organization, Lynn United for Change, and neighborhood, Neighbor to Neighbor uh, 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 Community Housing Plan. Uh, we worked with them over time and it had multiple discussions uh, to, to arrive at a place where we could uh, fund this plan. It does uh, three things. Uh, provide money for tenant based or rental assistance, again, uh, leading back to, to providing funds to, to people who need this money to get through these times. Um, the neighborhood rehabilitation and repair program, e existing housing stock is also uh, in poor condition in many places, and we want to put some money to, to bring those conditions up to, to, to uh, a good standard. Uh, and finally, three million going directly into the affordable housing trust fund. Uh, which the, the trust fund board will be able to direct those funds and that's really uh, going to be seed funding as, as many of you know this trust fund is new to the city so this funding is going to really allow it to, to get going and start its mission of uh, working on affordable housing for lenders. Yeah and I, I just want to say I think uh, what was exciting about that is uh, for those the tenant base uh, rental assistance plans and the uh, neighborhood uh, rehabilitation program. Those were funded at the amount requested, um, and I th we are excited about those programs, um, and excited to also see what the Affordable Housing Trust Fund uh, will do to aid some of the other housing programs that may have, or proposals that may have been applied for, but didn't receive funding in this ARPA round. Um, so I wanna re uh, you know, drive that point home as well. There will be still funding opportunities through that, through that um, uh, funding program. Um, and just moving on, we, we also uh, put uh, $3.9 million into um, water infrastructure. These are going to be upgrades towards um, various uh, water projects throughout the city to ensure that residents have the water delivered to them um, and also that the um, overflows are, uh, are running properly. So that's going to be a, a project that will get underway. Um, we did $3 million uh, towards public health, uh, to the ex expressly to the Lynn Community Health Center, which has been um, a pivotal um, institution in our community d throughout COVID, um, and we think that we want to be able to see them expand their services and programs as well. Uh, as was mentioned before, food security came back as, as, a, as a really big need, and, and we know that. Uh, many of the people in this room were involved in, in providing food to the community during the height of the pandemic. That effort was, was a big uh, effort by a lot of people in the city. Uh, so we were able to coordinate with uh, Norris Guscott, who leads our food security task force, and there's, there's too many people working on that to, to think all at once. But well, we were able to bring together a number of organizations to craft these plans around food, food security. They're each tackling different areas of the community, and that was really uh, the, uh, the answer that we needed to have these, these different spaces and people holding these multiple spaces uh, to get food to people who need it, and that was the, the critical thing. So we're very, very excited about this. This is uh, 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 very well spent money, as you can see here, uh, over a million dollars into uh, food security. Uh, next, we wanted to talk a bit more about uh, nonprofit funding. So this went to a variety of nonprofits who are doing 
work throughout the city on all kinds of things. And we really wanted to highlight a number of these. Uh, $15,000 went to Cultural uh, Latina Dance Academy for their programming. Uh, they provide uh, cultural programming that enriches the city. They have participated uh, throughout the city in a number of events. Um, many people here, I'm sure, have seen it. Um, um, happy to support that program. The real program is helping youth with reading comprehension and education. It's a critical element we know that's underserved in our community. Uh, they're going to get uh, that fund for capital improvements to help them provide that classroom space where they can continue that mission to teach the youth. Uh, Fifteen thousand, uh, I'm sorry, fifty thousand dollars for center board. Uh, this is going directly to provide clothing, diapers, basic necessities uh, that that families need right now. Uh, so this is entirely to, to to get those raw materials so we can get those into, into families' hands through uh, center board. And we want to thank them for that project. Um, another fifty nine to raw arts to get them a van. Uh, raw arts communicated a need to 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 have this mobility, uh, and so we were happy to, to get them the funds to be able to do that. Uh, North Shore Maritime Center, many of you may have been familiar with them throughout the summer. They've been running uh, water sports programs, giving access to this sport, which is traditionally out of reach for a lot of communities, and they've, and they've given access to that. And I believe uh, hundreds of, of kids in Lynn now have gotten access to that program, so we're happy to expand that. Latina Santa Maria, uh, is an important Latina Mother's English language project uh, focused on if you want to help the students, the, you, you got to help the mothers. Uh, so that was uh, a project we were, were happy uh, to, to sustain. Um, the Lyosa Inc. Drop-In Center for high-risk youth, uh, $92,000 to fund this drop-in center. Uh, this is uh, a high-risk, vulnerable population that deserves uh, a place. Uh, or they can get that support that they need, so uh, happy to uh, continue to advance that, that need in, in our city. I so. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and just a few more we want to point out here. Uh, the Lynn Rapid Response Network providing important immigrant access to care. Uh, 100000 to the Lynn Music Foundation. Uh, we have many great Lynn artists and we want to support them and, and their creative work and what they're doing for the city. Um, also, Build Back Better Bridges to Music is, is providing music to the youth as well and bringing up new artists, so that's, we wanted to uh, advance them as well. Um, and I'll mention the, the Historical Society, the Lynn Museum, who has for years been doing great programming in the city uh, and, and deserves the support and we're happy to support them. Uh, and uh, a saint with the, the Community Minority Cultural Center, a staple in the community, uh, who uh, <clears throat> we're happy to uh, help advance uh, an institution in the city. Okay, so uh, just moving on towards uh, workforce development, this is, uh, this is a priority that we saw emerge um, through community engagement during phase one. Um, and we realized that, you know, this is, we, in investing with our dollars, we wanted to invest in our community and explicitly invest in uh, our residents. And so um, we, we sought to, you know, put in a, a number of programs that we think will help out uh, people to uh, be able to obtain the jobs down the line that are uh, higher earning. Um, and we feel that uh, these programs will equip them with the skills uh, and, and training necessary to obtain those jobs um, and to advance their careers in their future for themselves and their family. So we're particularly excited about um, funding this uh, category. Um, and, and this is going, excuse me, this is just going back towards uh, funding um, that uh, will be going towards the city but will uh, provide a great benefit to our residents um, noteworthy. Um, we're going to be uh, making a number of uh, upgrades uh, to the building um, along with uh, Lynn Community Television. Anybody that may have been watching at home for the MBTA uh, public hearing last week know that the cable feed cut out, not at, at no fault of anybody, but 
but there's clearly some um, improvements that can be made, um, and so we're going to be putting funding towards towards in increasing access uh, for people both at home and here in the building as well. Um, so you'll start to see those changes made in the coming months, um, but we also had um, some equipment purchases to support the uh, Department of Public Works, which I think uh, as soon as you step foot on the sidewalk, you'll see that uh, it impacts everybody's uh, daily lives. So while they're not necessarily the most exciting investments, they uh, will make a great deal of progress for uh, residents in the city. So we're, we're excited about that. And, and I, I think this uh, brings us into the discussion and question segment, uh, open comments as well. Please feel free to come up. We'll uh, turn the mic over. Um, we, what we wanted to talk about was the programs that we funded and the projects that we funded uh, are available online, linarpa.com. Uh, that's the full website, right? Yep, linarpa.com. And uh, we received, uh, of the projects that we received, I think we, it would have uh, combined to a total of 92 million dollars so we had you know it was it was a a great effort to try and undertake and figure out what what projects were um, viable what projects were able to fit into um the outline of that that and, and the guidance that we sought from the community that we were given um and so i think you can see we had about 22 million dollars to fund uh projects that were requested at the um at the total of $92 million. So it was a difficult process. We really appreciate your patience throughout it, uh, your input, your coming to public meetings night after night. I know everybody has families and it's easier to get home, but uh, it, it really helped us out making these decisions. Uh, we couldn't have done it without the tremendous uh, help from the city city council, uh, particularly Councilor Field as well as Councilor Allenson. So, Thank you, and for that, I'll just uh, ask if anybody has any comments, questions. We'd be happy to try and field them. Can we come up there? Uh, Good evening, everyone. This is a joint statement from the three organizations that have worked in the uh, community uh, plan for housing. So, I don't start. So, the Excess County Community Organization, ECHO, Me United for Change, a neighbor to neighbor, I appreciate that Major Jerry Nickerson has answered our call to devote Lean ARPA funding to affordable housing by allocating half of the remaining funds toward addressing the housing crisis. The 5.5 million specifically per mark for the community housing plan proposed by our coalition will add critical resources to prevent displacement and create urgently needed affordable housing. We are proud to have played a key role in making affordable housing the top priority for this round of land offer allocations and in centering the voices of directly impacted people. We knocked on doors, rallied, and delivered a petition signed by over 1,500 people calling for affordable housing to be a top priority in this round of funding. And the mayor's proposal is a clear step forward. It is no secret that there's more work to be done a key part of the community housing plan is the direct involvement of community groups in implementing the proposed programs. We know that these resources will be most effective when the voices of the people directly impacted by the housing crisis inform decisions from the start. And we look forward to collaborating with the city around this goal. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that statement. Jeff Crosby, the United Coalition. I just want to do, uh, I'm one of the people that was critical about the first round. I'm really glad to see that this round is tilted in the direction that it is and appreciate that. But I also just wanted to um, offer some appreciation for the effort and the process that was made to open things up. All the meetings, different languages, translations, and you know, if you go to all those meetings, you don't get what you want in the end, you can get frustrated, but 
but it was, I, I've been here maybe 40 years off and on, working a little bit in that I haven't seen anybody make this big an effort to open up the conversation. And I particularly wanted to um, thank John and Dania, who, at least in my experience, every single time, um, and they responded, they were courteous, and they went an extra mile. So I, I appreciate the work. It'll probably be the happiest people in the city when the process is over and they can go back to doing whatever they used to do. So I, I uh, appreciate that. I wanted just to acknowledge that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate those comments. And it's that, John, that you're referring to as well. So, uh, Did anybody else have any um, comments or? So I'm going to try my best to raise my voice. I sort of lost it. I'm here with several of my neighbors. We're from Pine Hill. And we, like the rest of the city, have a rat problem. We mentioned this at the ARPA community meetings last winter. You remember, you were there, yeah. We went to another community meeting a couple weeks ago. And I'm sorry, are they busy? I'm, I'm listening. Okay. Trying to get them. We went to another meeting a couple weeks ago. Let me just, by way of background, last winter I brought information to our counselors and to the folks that were at the community meeting at Sol Anderson School about a new product called ContraPest. It's a product that sterilizes rats so they can't reproduce. It's had success in cities and towns all over the country, including a 98% reduction in rat population in Washington, D.C. My counselor gave that information to the director of ISD. Nothing was done as far as we know. We all went to a meeting in October with our ward counselors, with a representative from TBW, from ISD. We raised this again. To my dismay, the representative from ISD had never heard of the product, even though it was on the front page of the item the week previous. Okay. I understand there are competing issues with respect to use of the ARPA funds, but this explosion in the rat population is a direct effect of the COVID pandemic. It's been documented nationwide that cities and towns are having problems with rodents because people were staying home. We in my neighborhood, I've lived there for five, my family's owned my house for more than five decades. We've never had rats until the summer after COVID. My next door neighbors have had gardens for decades, they've never had problems with rats. This past summer, my neighbor passed away in September and the garden that he took such great pride in was destroyed by rats. So while I understand perhaps this was not a priority right now, where it is such a direct, directly related impact of COVID, I would like to know what the city plans to do to address the rat population. <clears throat> Yeah, no, thank you, and, and I wasn't trying to be real, I was just trying to get some information about this. So, um, we, we did obviously receive your application, we reviewed it. Um, I think some of the thought was um, trying to put money towards a specific community over citywide. We tried to really utilize um, the funding to have the greatest impact, and we, we, we talked a little bit about you know what, what we could do, so I don't want to... Can I just add something? We actually addressed that. We proposed that it be a pilot, and we didn't want to throw something at you that had not been tested. We proposed it be a pilot as part of our pilot. We proposed before and after surveys for residents, before and after traffic, and we proposed the hiring of a part-time sanitation worker who can issue tickets to people who are violating the trash ordinance, which we know happens all over the city. Right. If you drive around any neighborhood the night before the trash is due, you see overflowing bins, overflowing dumpsters, and it's no doubt contributing to the problem. A part-time person for 20 hours a week at $20 an hour could fund their own position by issuing eight tickets a week. So we addressed that. We wanted it to be a pilot with the hope of expanding it citywide. So I, I do understand that you wanted something that was more, more had more impact citywide, but I mean, some of the projects that you've selected do not have citywide impact. No, I, so no. respectfully, John, I just, I asked for a meeting with Jared, with Mayor Nicholson, no response from your office or from the mayor. We're extremely disappointed. I personally have lived in this city for decades, 50 years, and I'm about to sell my house because of the lack of responsiveness to this issue. Uh, I actually I did want to mention, um, we 100% we recognize the, the rat problem has expanded 
dramatically from its historical nature. Uh, while it was not funded through the ARPA uh, funds, the, the city has actually looked at doing so through the, the supplemental budget that will be coming through actually in the next few weeks. Uh, so that is, maybe didn't find a home here, but did find a home just in the natural uh, city fund. So we'll, we'll be talking more about that actually in the next few weeks through just the, the normal city fund. Yeah, and I do want to say I appreciate everybody that came out tonight. Obviously, there are a number of projects that people are passionate about, um, and I would be happy to try and follow up after uh, and, and have those conversations. I'm sorry that you didn't get uh, the, the response that was necessary. It certainly didn't indicate that we don't recognize that, that there is an issue, um, and it's something that we've been trying to get uh, better at from you know the direct um, dealing directly with the rat issue with bait boxes, but also in encouraging people um, when they have the opportunity to, uh, if their barrels are broken, to replace the lid. So it's a, it's a, we've, we've been, again, working very closely with our council partners uh, to try and make sure that the education program that we're doing uh, on, on picking up litter, picking up trash, and what it contributes if you don't, um, is, it's an ongoing effort. So I, I just had a question for, I believe your name is John as well. Yeah. Um, is it expected that they will, the city will consider using this other product, which ultimately, if there's a 98% success rate, you're not going to need to buy all those big species anymore? Yeah, I, I will say, I mean, like, we do have, like, a procurement process, so I can't really get into, like, specifically, like, what product we're going to use one over the other. I appreciate that you did the research, which certainly helps us look in that direction, but, um, but there, there is a process for, for going through that, so... train people in our community to get the jobs that are that are going to drive the economy forward. That's part of the recovery, 100%. Can we, is there a phase three or, I know tonight we're just here on the phase two proposals, but what is like the next step and it, will there be a phase three and what's the timeline for that? Uh, next steps, that's a great question. Uh, so with phase one and phase two combined, we have spent maybe like 98% of the ARPA funds. So there won't be a phase three like we have seen here. Um, there, uh, she's asking ask if there would be a phase three ARPA. Uh, and just to explain that, there won't be a phase three like, a, like the programs here. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I think that's a good question. I think what we've already seen since phase one, and I don't think it's any surprise to anybody here, with inflation, the prices of absolutely everything has gone up. Um, so we hope that the projects that got funded are able to fully utilize the amount that they were able to do so. Um, I think we'll just have to wait to see. Um, at this point, it would be a little premature to say whether there will or won't be. As for other next steps, we are now in the implementation phase. So for those groups that have been awarded funds, we're working with them to get through that process and, and, and get them those funds. Uh, there are also a, a, a few upcoming opportunities to continue to participate in the city process. We're, we're uh, working on the website, as, as what said, another need that the community has discussed, that our ability to communicate through the website needs to be improved, so that process will be upcoming. Uh, we, as, as you saw, the, the first round of ARPA had a significant investment in the, in the parks and local green spaces, so when that process comes up, we'll be asking neighbors in, in the community about what they want to see uh, that process look like as well. So there'll be some more oncoming. Um, and, and I should add as well, I think in terms of thinking about spending the ARPA funding as efficiently as possible, we didn't want to fund projects that could potentially uh, use federal dollars that may be coming to us uh, or, or through grants. So we're going to be working on you know, taking some of the project ideas, but also seeing what might be applicable to other grant funding that is out there so that we can fully uh, maximize what what funding is coming into the city. Um, and CSS has already been great about sending us projects um, that are uh, potentially, um, at, uh, that, that we could potentially apply for. So I think that's an important note as well. Uh, 
Um, first and foremost, congratulations. Thank you for your hard work. I've seen you since day one, uh, carrying those huge, huge poster boards, uh, finding a parking just to go for meetings, and to all of you, uh, thank you for your service. Number two, uh, as anybody here, I'm also here to, to learn because I'm not the city councilor assigned to be part of the, the ARPA meeting. So a lot of the questions I'm also curious. Number three is that, do you have a timeline as to when these programs will have to use their money? And if there's leftover money, is there a system where we can use those leftover money to fund like the rat problem in Pine Hill? Uh, although as a ward councilor, um, it will open up a Pandora box for other neighborhoods to say, why are we funding you when Goldfish Pond, when I left my house today, I almost hit a big rack. So it's a city problem, but we acknowledge, correct. Uh, no, 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 but I really appreciate you guys are here. So the question is because we allocated $3 million in the first, even before the first round of phase one, and I know for a fact that because we've been updating about the allocation of money to support small businesses, I know that there's still leftover left. So the question is, where can we roll over that money to add more for the housing projects, for example? So. Uh, abs absolutely, I think, so that is a very good point, Councillor. I think, uh, so to be perfectly clear, when we assign a number to a project, it, might, it says a million, but they might spend 9999 and we get a dollar back or whatever it is. Uh, that number could be different for other projects and other projects may go over the spending and, and Maybe some people ask us for a little more help if, if, if their project went over. Uh, so we don't know where the final shakeout's gonna be. So we, we reserved some money, so we didn't spend all of it, so we can responsibly respond to those types of fluctuations. So we can't responsibly say what's gonna happen in the future because we just don't know where things will shake out. I can say that if there's any money left over, the city's gonna work hard to spend every dime for the benefit of the city. Uh, so if, we, if there is an opportunity, I, I'm sure the, the, the mayor and the council will be able to work together to, to sort that out. But I just, at this point, I think it's too soon to say what that would, could possibly be. And I, I just want to see, so you had asked about the timeline as well. So um, I, I think at this point, I mean, it might be no, but it's expended by 2024, spent by 2026. So that's why we, we, we tried to put um, it, what may have felt like I guess depending on what, where you're saying, it could have felt like an expedited process or that it was too slow, but, but we, we want to get these funds out the door and in the hands of people so that they can start finding uh, the you know, people that they need to, to, have, to, to get these projects going, I guess I should say, whether that be um, construction or, or whatever you may need, but we want to get this money spent so that we don't lose it. So, if my program is not part of what was spoken about today, then we're not going to be funding. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, so you should. Sorry, so you should be getting some type of notification from our office. Um, if it if it wasn't up on the uh, board, then yeah, it's it's um, it's likely not getting funded. Yes. I just want to say for the record, I, I'm the executive director of Habitat Plus. We've been running a supportive housing program for the psychiatric and disabled infections in the city for like 35 years. We've never gone to the city and asked, um, and I'm really disappointed that the city didn't see to help disabled infections. Sure. Yeah, no, well, thank you for your work for the past 35 years. Well, the um, program will close. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, I think uh, I work in the mayor's office as well. Um, I think uh, there were a number of projects that were uh, similar in the affordable housing uh, realm that weren't specifically funded through the ARPA process, but those funds were referred uh, with the help of uh, Echo and Yen for Change and Neighbor to Neighbor to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is a totally separate body, totally separate process, but funds will be used for affordable housing. So I think that was the idea with um, a number of projects that may have been similar, um, uh, improving uh, capital and rehabilitating housing. Um, so I would just say look out for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund as well.
Do we have any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, do you have any plan for like all the trash you have in the college? Like, so that I drive by, face out on the floor. You know, I would like to go for a walk and it's just trash all over the grass, all over the sidewalks. I mean, you guys have any plan? Anybody's picking it up? They said they got some machines, the machines broke. So we don't have anything. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I mean, recently the city did deploy a new street sweeper. Um, obviously it doesn't help inside the park, but the goal is to pick up the trash that are in the gutter line so that it doesn't blow across the street as well. And again, I mean, I think, um, I think one of the things that we really uh, tried to be, um, tried to engage residents with, and again, along with uh, the city council, is just a litter campaign to educate people. We had the ability to have uh, if you're, the, the top of your barrel is broken, you can get that repaired at no cost to you. Um, part of this is it's, it's a continuous public effort, uh, public education piece, but also working with people that, you know, when there are particularly dirty areas, to let us know, to let your city councilor know, to let the DPW know, and we try and go out there uh, and pick up uh, the, the trash. But obviously it's, it's, it's an issue that some days it's not as bad, on windy days it's worse. So yeah, I think, um, I think we have been trying to make those, take, take a more active um, approach towards tackling that, that problem, understanding that it's one that takes a little bit more time, unfortunately, um, with the limited number of pieces of equipment and the limited number of bodies that we have. Um, and I think as well, uh, the limited number of park cleanups that the board councilors can do. Um, that's something every Saturday morning that they've been doing in the spring and the fall. Um, and we would just encourage people to come down and, and, uh, and participate in those as well. So it's, it's an ongoing issue, I think. It's an ongoing uh, effort, I should say. I just would like to add, um, we need everybody's uh, help as well. You know, if that happens and you're in the area, call your ward counselor or, or any of that large counselors ASAP because that's the only way we could uh, get help and support and fix the problem right then and there. Um, aside from the educational part, I know we've also um, funded some big belly trash cans that would help uh, through ARPA, that will help um, uh, the situation of trash in our city. If, if that's the solution, maybe this is part will help in the, in the future, we'll see, that's, that's for us to find out. Yeah, that's actually an excellent point. Uh, in phase one, we funded uh, a big belly trash barrel program. Uh, we're in the process of ordering that. We expect that to roll out in the spring um, at, at, the city, at various city parks. Um, those are high capacity barrels that uh, compact the trash that also then send a signal to the DPW to let them know when to come pick it up. So it uh, increases efficiency uh, and doesn't take somebody away from uh, an issue over here to empty an empty barrel. Um, another project that you'll probably see rolling out, hopefully in the next couple weeks or month, we're still waiting on the official timeline, but a project that we did with uh, Creative Outdoor Advertising, they're gonna be putting a number of barrels in and around the downtown area and in, in some wards, um, which, will, which will be trash and recycling, um, and will feature um, kind of, you know, ad designs and logos, um, but which will be more efficient um, trash compacting units as well. So um, we're trying to, to increase the number of um, barrels that are out there, but also in doing so, kind of these smart barrels, if you will. Is there, I know there's a trash ordinance for like homes, you know, you can be fined $50 for first offense. Is there a similar ordinance for businesses to keep like the sidewalks in front of their businesses clear and clean? And yep, yeah, there is. Okay. I can't cite it. But yeah, no, I'm glad. Anybody else? Lee. All right, well, just in closing, I just want to, again, it was a, um, a lengthy process. We really want to continue the openness and transparency with uh, what we're doing here in City Hall, um, what we're doing with ARPA funding as these, um, as these the implementation begins. Um, this is all available on linarpa.com. We hope that you'll um, send any questions, comments our way by email, phone call. 
um, and also uh, engage in other uh, community input processes. Um, I know that we have um, we have a number of uh, uh, plans that are coming up to the planning department that are going to really uh, take everybody's input to help uh, guide the city forward. Um, so please keep your eye out for other ways that you can get involved and provide feedback to us. Um, we're counting on that. So thank you very much.